Hi everybody, this is Brianna Shea and I am with the Iowa Flood Center and today I'm going to talk a little bit about my organization and also my career path. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll share my screen and we'll get started. So this is actually part one of a two-part presentation. I do communications and outreach for the Iowa Flood Center and one of our programs called the Iowa Flood Information System, which I'll demonstrate at the end of this presentation. And my colleague, Kate Janini, she does uh, communications and outreach for a program that we have called the Iowa Watershed Approach. So a little bit about me, I already mentioned that I'm the communication specialist at the Iowa Flood Center. So I serve as the liaison between our research engineers and scientists and students at the Iowa Flood Center and the work that they are doing and making sure that we get that information out to the hands of the different partners and stakeholder groups that we work with at the Iowa Flood Center. So a little bit of background and kind of how I got started. This is a picture of my grandparents farm in Johnson County where I spent a lot of time when I was a kid spent hours fishing at that pond and playing in the barn and it was because of kind of this uh, childhood that I had that I knew from a pretty young age that I wanted to have a career when I got older that allowed me to be outdoors and do something related to natural resources. So after high school I attended Iowa State University and I received my bachelor's of science degree in animal ecology and originally with this degree I thought that it might end up um, earning me a position working for a county conservation board, maybe as a naturalist or doing something where I was interacting with the public, kind of teaching them about the environment and natural resources and how they can be better stewards of the land. And then later after I'd received my position at the Iowa Flood Center, I went on to earn my master's of arts degree in strategic communications, really just to kind of enhance my professional development skills and help me with the work that I do at the Iowa Flood Center. So here are just some images of some of the uh, different activities that I got to do while I was uh, working when I was going to Iowa State University and then after I graduated Iowa State. So I had the opportunity to work for two different uh, local soil and water conservation district offices. And if you're not familiar with those offices, there's an SWCD in every county in Iowa and the role that the different staff of those offices uh, work on is to work with different urban and rural landowners to figure out um, how, how they can incorporate better land use management um, strategies on their properties that will help to improve soil health, reduce flooding, or better manage nutrients on the landscape. So this was um, really fun opportunities that I had to work for those different offices and provided me with a lot of opportunities to get out in the streams and um, do stream assessments, do gully assessments, and really just have that chance to interact with landowners and, and figure out how we could work together to implement different conservation practices that, that would benefit their properties and worked really progressively um, with the landscape, but also had positive benefits on the environment. So I really enjoyed those positions and then uh, eventually I joined the Iowa Flood Center team starting in June 2015. And the Iowa Flood Center, we provide tools and resources to help people better understand and reduce their flood risks. And so I'll talk a little bit more about our background and the work that we do, but just this image is one example of one of the technologies or the tools that we've developed. This is a bridge sensor and this was originally part of a student design at the Iowa Flood Center and it's since been modified and enhanced but we have about 260 of these deployed on different bridges across the state of Iowa and they measure river levels every 15 minutes and then they communicate the information to an online system called the Iowa Flood Information System, the platform that I'll demonstrate at the end of the, the presentation. And so this is one of the most um, popular tools that we develop for the public and is um, something that I'll showcase a little bit later on in the presentation. Just a little bit more about the background about the Iowa Flood Center. We're actually part of IIHR Hydroscience and Engineering. And IIHR has actually been around for about 100 years and it is a unit of the University of Iowa's College of Engineering. And at IIHR, we have students and faculty members and researchers that are working together to understand and manage everything related to water resources. And so at the bottom right picture here is our location in Iowa City where we're stationed at the Stanley Hydraulics Laboratory. And the top right picture, that's actually one of our wave basin facilities that we have out at Oakdale and Corville. 
It's uh, one of the largest wave basins in the country. And uh, at this facility, we do research related to ship hydrodynamics, and we've worked to develop code and things like that for the Navy. And then we've got some students that are up in the top left that are at the state fair um, doing some outreach and education um, at, at that type of event. And we do a lot of outreach and education. It's kind of one of the, the strong pillars of um, our program. So because of IIHR's kind of rich uh, history and expertise related to all things related to fluids and water resources, after we had the 2008 floods that devastated a large part of Iowa, we had a group of legislators that came together really recognizing we needed a center that was devoted to studying floods and doing flood related research. And so they established the Iowa Flood Center at IIHR in 2009. And as I mentioned, kind of our goal or our mission is to provide Iowans with innovative tools and reliable information so that they can understand and reduce their flood risks. And one of the ways that we've done this is just by providing people with better information, information that they didn't have and that didn't exist um, when we had the 2008 floods. And so we've put together this Iowa Flood Information System platform that I'll show a little bit later on. A little bit about our audience at the Iowa Flood Center. It's very diverse, which makes my job a lot of fun, getting to interact with so many different people. So we work with legislators. Every year I coordinate an annual legislative breakfast event at the Capitol, which is one of the highlights for our team and an opportunity for us to go and showcase the work and the things that we've accomplished over the past year, and then also talk about future projects and things that we'll be working on. And we also hold a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with legislators just so that they're aware of the tools and the resources that we provide and the, the benefits that we um, provide Iowans. Um, some of our other popular uh, audience members are emergency management coordinators. So there's typically one emergency manager in every county and it's their job to kind of make sure that they're working to protect um, their citizens from all types of different disasters, flooding being one of them. So we make sure that those emergency management coordinators know about our flood information system platform and some of the tools and the resources that we have available to help them in their positions. We work with a lot of different federal and state agency groups that I'll demonstrate and I'll show in the next slide. The media, they're one of our primary audiences because when we have an active flood event or something going on across the state, they really help us get that information out to the public so they know that they can go to our online platform to access updated flood information that could help them make better informed decisions about how to protect their homes or businesses or properties. Um, and then we also do a lot of K through 12 outreach and also um, college level outreach where we go into the classrooms and we give presentations um, similar to this where we talk a little bit more about the work that we do at our center. And with uh, some of the more watershed based work that we do, and the flood mitigation work that we're involved with, we work with a lot of different um, landowners and watershed stakeholders and partners across the state of Iowa. So we really touch on you know, federal, state, and local partners. And then more recently, because of uh, so much flooding that we've had in Iowa and surrounding states, and really across the nation, we've had a lot more interest from outside um, states that have come to us and are looking to the Iowa Flood Center to figure out what types of um, information they can learn from us and how they might be able to adapt a similar program or model back in their own states. So we've had some visitors from North Carolina and Texas and we're involved with conversations with folks from Nebraska and Missouri and, and other surrounding states about how we can share the great work that we've done here at the Iowa Flood Center with them so that they can help um, better prepare um, their, their uh, communities in their states as well. So this is a look at some of the federal and the state agencies that we get to work with. So as you see, it's very um, diverse and it takes a lot of coordination and communication with all of these different groups. But uh, one of the kind of fun things about my job is figuring out how we can complement and support all of these other um, agencies that, that we work very closely with. And being at the University of Iowa and being an academic research center, it allows us to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of the different projects and things that we can work with. So it's been a really nice synergy with a lot of these different uh, partners that you see listed on the screen here. 
and we make sure that we don't um, duplicate efforts or that we're not being redundant, but we really work together to make sure that we're complementing one, one another and being very supportive of each other's programs. So the work that I do is really focused on the education, the outreach, and the communications parts of the Iowa Flood Center. And so because we are an academic research center, uh, it's really important that we're making sure that we get that great science and all of the work that we do out into the hands of the general public and the different partners that we work with. And so I have uh, the opportunity to have a lot of um, diversity in my work responsibilities and duties. So one of the things that I um, get to do is develop different print materials for the Iowa Flood Center that we distribute to our different partners and we take to events. So the top right image there is a magazine that we developed uh, in celebration of our 10 year anniversary that was a lot of fun to put together. Um, I spend time going to the Capitol and attending events with um, partners to either staff booths or give presentations and talk about the work of the Iowa Flood Center. And so we do a lot of different um, conferences and outreach activities that way. And then I also engage with a lot of the classroom events and activities that we do at the Iowa Flood Center. So that's kind of one of my favorite parts actually is getting out into the classrooms and visiting with um, students and kind of helping to educate the next generation of Iowans, which is um, a big part of the Iowa Flood Center's mission and, and charge. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the loves and challenges of my position, and then I'll, I'll offer um, potentially some advice that might be helpful. So what I love about my job is that I get to travel the state of Iowa with my colleagues, and I feel like I have friends and partners in all corners of the state. And because I am at an academic center, I, I feel challenged, um, but I also love that I'm always getting to learn new things and learn about new tools and technologies and research that's going on at the center. And so um, I really like that part of my job. It keeps things kind of fresh and, and new and allows me to always have something different that I can be sharing and promoting with our different partners and the public. And my position is very rewarding. I feel like we are making an impact and having a very um, positive influence on, on Iowans and their ability to react and, and respond more efficiently um, when we have flood events that are going on across the state. And again, I think being at the Iowa Flood Center and the University of Iowa and at an academic center, I have more opportunities to be um, creative in my work. And so I get to um, work on video projects and different print projects and opportunities to host different meetings and events. Um, and I'm fortunate that I have a very supportive team that allows me to do that. And then finally, being a part of a passionate team. I think that that is really, really important. And that passion kind of stems from the great leadership that we have at the Iowa Flood Center. And it trickles down to everybody that works there. And we're all working towards a, a common uh, goals and similar mission. And um, it's just a very energizing team atmosphere at the Iowa Flood Center. So I'm really fortunate to have that because that's um, you don't always find that. Challenges of my position, uh, I mentioned that there's a lot of different audience members that we engage with. So there's constant audience turnover. So that education and outreach piece, it never goes away. There's always new emergency managers to interact with or new local officials that you need to make sure that you're getting your information out to or new legislators to make sure that you're reaching. And so um, that is one of the challenges of the position, but it also makes it makes it fun in that we're always finding um, new new friends and partners to work with. Uh, similar to that, just the audience coordination and strategy. So I show it all those different federal and state agency groups that we work with, and it takes a lot of coordination to make sure that we're not, um, you know, being redundant and make sure that we're um, providing tools and resources that are going to help them in their positions as well. And that, that, that requires a lot of strategy to figure out how best to reach all of these different audiences and partners that we work with. And then communication can be really fast paced, especially with social media these days. And then also just when we have an active flood event going on, you really have to be prepared and ready to reach out to the media to make sure that they can share information or just to make sure that people are reminded of the, the information and the tools that we make available at the Iowa Flood Center. 
So advice I have, uh, first and foremost, I think when you're choosing a career, it's important that you choose something that you're interested in and that you're going to have fun doing because it's something that you're gonna spend most of your adult life doing and probably you know, spending at least 40 hours a week um, going to a job. And another thing that I think is important is to always keep challenging yourself to, to you know, seek professional development opportunities and to continue to grow in your position and really become an expert in your position. Um, sometimes I feel like people are challenged to be kind of the, the Swiss army knife of their organizations and do all things and know everything about their organization. And uh, I really think it's more um, efficient if you just can kind of focus on being an expert in, in your area. And then being open-minded, you know, not setting limitations on yourself or the different, um, different projects and things that you can work with. And um, I'm constantly reminded of this just being in an academic center. I, I think that we have more of those opportunities to be really creative and innovative with the work and the projects that we get involved with. And don't be afraid of failure. So some of the um, best lessons that I've learned has been because I failed um, at something or something didn't go exactly right when I was maybe organizing a meeting or event. But um, those have been the best growing opportunities for me. I've been able to utilize those failures and those lessons and applied them to um, future similar situations that have um, you know, made those, those future situations better. Learn about your teammates. I think this is really important because as I mentioned, you know, I really try and focus on being kind of an expert related to the communication side of things. I, I can't be an expert on all the technical things that go on at the flood center, like the modeling and the mapping and the, the monitoring equipment and things like that. But when I have questions about those things, I've gotten to know my teammates enough that I know who I can ask those questions to. And uh, I, I think that's uh, just part of the environment that we have at the Iowa Flood Center and that everybody is very supportive of one another and always willing to help out. And so I think it's important to kind of establish those relationships with your teammates. And then of course, knowing your audience, as I showcased on the screen earlier, all the different partners that we get to uh, interact with. Um, it's very fun, it's very rewarding, um, but it takes a lot of time to get to know and build those relationships and, and understand what those different partners need and want and how we can best be supportive of their organizations. And then for my role, it's very important that I'm organized and that I have good time management skills. So it takes a lot of prioritization and um, figuring out, you know, when there are maybe down times, what I could be working on to be better prepared for maybe the next flood event that might come around. So maybe that's working on press releases or media announcements and having things kind of ready to go. And also I would say being, you know, adaptable, I guess, is another important uh, key or skill set to develop. And again, that kind of stems from the environment that I work in, where a, a flood event can uh, occur um, pretty quickly and we need to be ready and able to respond to that event and making sure that we're reaching the public and our different partners when we have an active flood situation going on. So with that, I'm going to end with talking about kind of a little bit about my, my career and myself. Um, I will offer, if anybody has questions, you can feel free to email or call me. And here's also a link to the Iowa Flood Center website if you're interested in learning more about the center and some of the projects that we have going on. We also do a lot of tours and visits. Uh, and so if anybody is ever interested in coming to the Iowa Flood Center and spending a day or a couple hours, looking at some of our monitoring equipment, touring some of our labs, or just visiting with uh, myself or anybody else at the Flood Center, I'd be happy to coordinate that. So now I am going to go ahead and share the Iowa Flood Information System. So when I pull up the Iowa Flood Information System, this is the landing page to that Google Maps based web interface that we've developed. And so there's a couple different ways where you can access information once you get to IFIS. You can click on this green launch IFIS button, or you can click on a couple different shortcuts at the bottom that we've made it simpler for people that are trying to get to some of our most popular features. But for now, I'm just gonna go into the general launch IFIS interface. 
And as soon as you enter the general IFAS platform, you'll see any current flood alerts that we have going on across the state. So if I click on any one of these little triangles, it will automatically delineate the watershed outline. And then you can click on more information from the pop-up box that appears. And you can use the slider bar to see what the river levels have done over the past week and a half. And then also what they're predicted to do over the next five days. So this is really great information for emergency managers to have so that they know when to perhaps issue evacuations or close down roads and bridges and make sure that they're protecting critical infrastructure or businesses or properties in their communities that could potentially be impacted by this event. And so it's really great information, especially for those audiences. And then also just anybody from the public that might be impacted um, by this type of flood. So now I'm also just going to and shut off the flood alerts and I'm going to pull up all of the different locations where we have stream gauges deployed across the state of Iowa. And so you see the little green squares. So those are U.S. Geological Survey stream gauges and the blue squares. Those are Iowa Flood Center bridge sensors that we've deployed. And so we try and harvest data from um, USGS and other partners and make everything available in IFAS for kind of a one-stop shop where people can go to access flood information. So the USGS, their network tends to focus on monitoring the river levels on larger rivers and streams in Iowa, and they measure some additional information aside from just the river levels than what we do. And then our Iowa Flood Center network, the blue squares, those are focused on some of the smaller creeks and rivers and the tributaries to these larger systems. And so together, our networks really complement one another and provide Iowa with, you know, one of the most robust flood monitoring systems of anywhere in the country. So again, similarly to, you know, the flood alert that I clicked on earlier, I could click on any one of these bridge sensor locations, the pop-up box would appear, and then I could access that river level information for that site. And this information from all of these different um, squares that you see here is uploaded every 15 minutes to IFAS. And so it's pretty near real time, making the data um, very valuable for people that are um, working efficiently to try and protect their communities and, and citizens from flood events. So I'm gonna shut off the stream gauges and I'm just gonna go down some of the other tools that we have available here. The next thing that I'll showcase are the statewide flood inundation maps that we've developed. This was a partnership with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, where we've mapped the 2, the 5, the 10, the 25, 50, 100, 200, and 500-year floodplain boundaries for every county in the state of Iowa. So, for instance, I can just zoom in on the 500-year flood event here. Because this is a Google Maps-based interface, I can zoom in and out on any location on the map and it would show me the areas that would be impacted by this 500 year flood event. So I'm just zooming in on Iowa City here. And then again, you can see the areas that would be impacted. You can change this to satellite view because it is just based on that Google Maps based platform. And it really gives you a good idea of um, areas that would be impacted at this stage. And so these maps are especially useful for planning and decision making in advance of a flood. So figuring out where to avoid putting critical infrastructure like schools or um, hospitals or um, public works facilities, things like that. So I'll zoom back out and shut these maps off. Go back to my terrain view. And then I also want to show some different community scenario maps that we've developed for a select set of communities across the state of Iowa. So we currently have about 30 of these scenario-based inundation maps developed for different communities across the state, as well as we've recently added inundation maps for pools 11 through 19 on the Mississippi River. And we continue to add about two to three new communities every year uh, to this library of inundation maps. But for now, I'm just going to click on Cedar Rapids and I'll show you kind of what these maps do. So when I click on Cedar Rapids, I can use this slider bar over here and I can create different flood scenarios. So for instance, in 2008, the river in Cedar Rapids crested, I believe around 32 feet. And so I can set that stage 
and then see which areas would be impacted by that amount. And again, I can change this to satellite view if I want to, and that really allows me to zoom in on different properties or businesses that might be in that flood hazard area. And I can use these tools, this water depth finder, and I can click on the map and it would show me at that location, I would have 5.9 feet of water in that location. Um, and then we've also added damage estimates for a select set of the inundation maps that we provide. And these provide a, a look at the affected buildings and structural and content damage that would be impacted at this stage. And so it's just another tool for trying to better uh, plan and prepare, prepare for these types of flood events. So for instance, in 2016, Cedar Rapids had their second highest flood crest on record and they were able to utilize these maps in advance of when the floodwaters were going to be reaching the city to figure out where to put up HESCO barriers and how to best protect some areas of the, the city. And so these maps have really good utility for communities to help them better um, respond and prepare when we have flood events going on across the state. So I am just going to refresh the page and show a couple other features. The next thing that I wanted to show were just some of the weather conditions that you can access in IFAS. So you can access current, past, and future rainfall conditions. So for instance, if I turn on cumulative rainfall, a pop-up box will appear that will allow me to just step back day through day in time for up to a two week period. And last week we had Tropical Storm Cristobal that moved through the state of Iowa. So that's why we're seeing those really heavily uh, impacted areas in this part of the state. And I can go back up to that two week period to, to look at the amount of rainfall that we've received. So this just is another layer of information to put into context um, when we have flood events going on or to help people better prepare and understand flood events in their areas. And then I can also look at the daily forecast. So we're expected to get some rain starting in Western Iowa today and then moving through the next couple days. We also have some rain in the forecast so I can step through time day by day to kind of look at which areas are expected to be impacted by that and a, a kind of a rough estimate of what the rainfall amounts might look like for those areas. So another great tool for emergency managers or uh, different local partners who need to be thinking about what types of impact um, this additional rainfall might have for their area. There are many other tools that you can access through the Iowa Flood Information System platform that I won't spend a lot of time going through, but I encourage you to, to spend some time navigating and exploring um, the site on your own. So with that, I'm going to stop share. And uh, again, feel free to have questions. Please make sure to tune in to part two of the Iowa Flood Center for Free Presentation to hear from my colleague, Kate Dean.